All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry the Chupacabra, and today we're going to be talking about Discord again, most notably how to work your way around the Discord mobile app because, well, there's not a lot of real estate on your screen. You have quite a bit of real estate when it comes to things like the desktop app, which I'm sure a lot of people are already rather familiar with. You got like a sidebar over here that contains all the channels and the servers and then here's all the people on the server and like their roles and everything but everything is kind of condensed because you need room for all of the written information that you can share and use with people so today we're going to be doing the complete discord setup tutorial for those of you who are interested in using the mobile app the mobile version or find yourselves using the mobile version a lot and fair warning to you folks at home, some stuff is just not that easy to use or just not that available in the mobile version of the app. So just be prepared to set some stuff up on your computer or someone else's computer when you have a chance. So when you log in to Discord for the first time on your phone, you'll have to do the normal, like, create an account, log in sort of thing. And then you'll be greeted by a panel that looks a little bit like this. If you click on these three little bars over here, this opens up your channels and everything that you can communicate to other people with in the server that you're currently on, along with the list of servers that you can make. And if we pull this up, we can go ahead and click on this little circle to make a new test server. So this will be the Chupacabra. Oh, wait, I'm not joining a server. I want to create a server. So we'll create this the Chupacabra, Chupacabra mobile server. And I'm using this, I'm, I'm messing around with this on an emulator on my computer to make it easier to edit and record this whole thing. But all of these features are exactly what you would see inside of Discord. This version of the app has not been edited in any way to suit an emulator any better or any worse. And my server region is US West, so we'll select that. You can select the server, which is as close to you as possible, which will cut down on latency. Unfortunately, since Discord is still kind of new, they don't have servers in absolutely every single corner of the world, but they should have one fairly close to you. And then we can just click on Create, and then we have the Chupacabra mobile server, or CMS. And here you can see my other character, my other login instance, is currently logged in and I'm gonna actually turn that off so that my my desktop version of me doesn't get in the way. So this is our little Chupacabra mobile server. So to finish setting this up, we're gonna wanna click up here, these three little dots, and this will bring up the server settings for whatever server that you're on. Sometimes you'll have more settings than others. It depends on the level of permissions that you have on that server before you can modify certain things. So this is things like you can mute the server so that the server cannot send you notifications, or you can just open up the notification settings in general to control the broad swath of the notifications from the server. You've also got, whoops, that's the wrong set of permissions. You've also got privacy settings, which can be really nice for allow direct messages from server members. You can disable this if you'd like. Then you've got the primary bread and butter, which is the actual server stuff itself. You can go to overview. This allows you to do things like select a new photo that you'd have to pull from your gallery on your phone. So make sure you download one that you really want to use. Then you can change the server region at any time through here, change the name at any time. You can determine an AFK channel, which we don't have one yet. So we'll come back to that. And then I think the AFK timeout will make like 15 minutes because Sometimes people go take like a potty break or something and you don't want to hear them doing that, but they'll be back, you know, before 15 minutes is up. Let's see, verification level. So one of the things that you can do in Discord is you can make it so that random people who just created their account five seconds ago cannot join your server. So you can also have them make like an email. And I'll actually probably do that one. And you can have it so that they have medium level of verification required, but they must have a registered account with Discord. It has to exist longer than five minutes. Or you can say that they have to have a registered account and they have to be a member of the server for longer than 10 minutes 
before they can say any words or do anything. Personally, I have no troubles dealing with trolls. It's really easy to ban them on Discord, so I don't really worry about that. But if you find yourself being spammed a lot, this is one of the things that can help detour people like that. All right, so default notification settings. You can change it to be like only mentions, all messages. Uh, I'll probably just do only mess uh, mentions because that's a little easier. And then we'll save that stuff as we go back. Channels. You can actually create and edit channels directly through the settings panel when it comes to the mobile application. And I think I might do that. So let's create another channel. Let's create a voice channel. Let's make this voice channel the AFK channel. Everyone can see this channel, which you can't really adjust because we don't have any other permissions here. And now that channel is saved and we can go back up here to the, no, no, to the overview, and we can make the AFK channel the AFK channel. So that's done. Click OK. Integrations. Integrations are something that's only available on the desktop, so don't worry about that for mobile. Uh, I don't actually remember what that's about, to be honest with you. I think it was called something else, or my brain associates it with something else. But through this panel, we can do all sorts of stuff. We can edit these existing channels by clicking on them. You can mute the channels so that you don't get any messages from them. You can change the channel topic to the welcome cha or welcome to the mobile Chupacabra server. And then you can just change all these notification settings. You can invite people to this server by clicking on this button here or you can adjust the permissions by going here. And it looks like, from what I've seen so far, you can either create mission or permissions directly through the channel settings, or through the permission settings themselves. So that's the general channel. Let's add another uh, text channel. We'll call it The Funny Bin. And then we'll just save that. That's available to everybody. That's where I'll say people can save Oh, I have to have, like, dashes in the, the text channels, I remember. The funny bin. It's really annoying that you have to have dashes in the text channels, but not in the voice channels. It seems like an oversight, if you ask me. So that's how you handle making channels. We can go into security, and we can enable server-wide two-factor two requirements so that everyone has to have an email attached to the server to do stuff. You can manage the members of the server. I can give myself a nickname. I can change my name to Bob the Cryptid if I want. Save that. And anybody who's attached to the server will show up here. You can assign them different roles. You can change their nicknames at will. Things like that. Let's see here. What else do I want to say? That was members. You can control how many invites you have pending on the server. So if somebody has invited one of their friends to your server and they've created one of those links, it's possible for some members to create permanent links if you give them that permission. And if you want to see who's letting assholes in your server, this is where you can see those, those you know, extended links, who made them, who has access to them, and you can delete them or change them as needed from the instant invite section. And then, of course, here you can see bans. And if somebody is banned, you can remove them from the ban list or make changes there. So let's add a couple of roles while we're here. Uh, this is the everyone role, but I want to create a new role. So we'll call this. We'll call this the assistant admin role. We'll turn the role color into a nice blue. We'll set the role to display this role separately from other members, so it shows up specially in the sidebar. Allow people to mention this role. They are an administrator, they can manage the server, they can manage the different roles, which is what we're doing right now. They can edit channels, they can kick people, ban people. They can create invites, which is a basic thing that most people can do, and they can manage nicknames. And then I also want them to have the ability to like read everything, manage messages to delete people saying something racial or insensitive. I want them to be able to mute people and to move members in voice channels. Although I do see an issue here where the save button covers up some of the options, which is annoying. And then everybody will not have the ability 
to change nicknames. Oh wait, they can change their own nicknames, just not everybody else's nicknames. And then, I don't want random people to send TTS messages, because that's annoying as hell, that's text-to-speech. But basically, if you want the more nitty-gritty of how to set up user permissions, they're basically the same thing. They're just kept in different places. There's another tutorial on the channel that you can check out for that. So I just want the assistant admin, and then I want the, um, veteran, veteran user. And then veteran users will be like, uh, they'll be like a light green. Then I want them to display this role separately. There's no reason to mention that role because that's going to be everybody. I don't want them to be able to do anything administratory, so I don't want them to even manage channels. But I do want them to be able to invite their friends. I do want them to be able to send TTS messages and to embed links, mention at everybody, read the message history, use emojis. I don't want them to be able to mute and deafen people at random or move people, so that's basically the basics. Now, if anyone joins my humble server, they will have a role that they can use. And that pretty much covers all of the settings for the server. The other settings that you want to know about are the user settings, which you can find down here in the user. So when you click on the sidebar, this is like your personal user. And if you connect to a channel, it'll A, show up down here at the bottom that you're connected. And I have it active set up for voice activation. So every time I talk, you can kind of see it, and I can actually open up directly the voice settings for my personal settings at any time with that button there to change things or to disconnect from the voice chat. And if you're on the desktop for your phone, it'll also show up here in the notifications that you're currently connected to the general voice chat. You can mute yourself, deafen yourself, or disconnect from the server right there from the notifications bar. Again, if you're on the go a lot, and you're kind of trying to like look at your email or something and you don't want people to hear you coughing, then it's probably a good thing that you don't have that, like that you mute yourself before you cough and make a lot of noise and disrupt somebody's trying to talk or something. So all of that personal connection stuff appears down here and then you can mute yourself and deafen yourself right here when you're in the app, etc. So the user settings in here are what you would expect. This is my account information. This is my email. It's available publicly, so I'm not too worried about you guys having it. You can change your password in here. You can change your username, change your icon. You can change your voice settings. Do note that when you're on the phone, you don't really have the ability to change what headset you're using to communicate with. So this will use whatever you have on by default. Also note that if you're not using a headset, or a secondary microphone, it's a good idea to use push to talk because otherwise when people talk, your speakers will echo into your microphone causing a really painfully loud feedback loop that sounds god awful. So if you're not using a headset to control the audio coming out of your phone, I would recommend using push to talk so you avoid feedback loops and all of that stuff. I'm using a headset because I'm on my computer, so I'm just going to leave that to voice activity. So one of the things that you can do with voice activity is you can have it automatically determine your voice input sensitivity. If that's not sufficient enough, you can make it less sensitive or more sensitive based on your needs like that. You can enable or disable echo cancellation. It's a good idea to leave it enabled unless you think it's neutering your voice somehow or making your voice sound weird. Same with noise suppression. This cuts down on things like breathing and static which is especially important if you're trying to talk to people in the car. Automatic gain control just controls it so that your the gain or the level of your microphone doesn't murder people's ears. And then the, the output device that you're using is just whatever is plugged into your phone. It's just the default device. And you can control the volume here. You can use the speaker, not use the speaker, however you like. And that's basically the bread and butter of these. A uh, push to talk doesn't let you determine like a special button on your phone. It just uses the button that is in the middle of your phone. So if I connect to one of these voice channels again, the push to talk button's the big button right here. You won't be able to use it unless you actually have the app itself open. So I'm actually going to disconnect again, go back into the user settings, and let's go to notifications. So this is very similar. You can enable notifications as they are convenient to you. Uh, I like to disable sounds because I find them really annoying. 
You can disable notification vibration or just enable notifications at all. These are all pretty simplistic and straightforward. Also, Bluestacks is giving me like delayed messages about what's happening on the deal, but I'm going to disable the notifications because if I'm on Discord, I am on there to talk to people, I'm on there actively communicating, and if I see something important pop up, like if I go back to the, the servers, I have a message from my friends waiting for me on this server, but I know it's there, I don't have to have a notification whining at me that I have one waiting, it just clutters up my phone and I find that quite annoying. So after notifications, we have text and images. This is where you can disable things like on your desktop, usually, where you can disable things like text-to-speech, but that doesn't really give you that option here. All it has is display images, videos, and locations. If you don't want it eating up your phone's data plan, you can disable that from loading automatically. And when uploading stuff directly to Discord, images larger than 8 megabytes will not be previewed. So again, this is just stuff that is really easy to cut down on the bandwidth requirements of Discord, especially if you don't have an unlimited plan or your plan is rather expensive. Link previews. Show website previews from links posted in chat. If you want to see that, you can leave this on. If not, you don't have to. And those are things like, if I go to the, our WoW server, this, he posted this WoW head news, and then part of it got pasted right here as a bit of a preview, but there was no picture. So it's stuff like that. So next up, we have behavior. Back button opens up the channel drawer. That could be very helpful, especially if you use this app a lot. And then you can have shift to send a message. So by default, external keyboards will send messages on enter. You can change that. Appearance, you can have the light version which will be brighter, although it doesn't look, oh, there it goes. That's the light theme. This is just visuals, really. Uh, you can have the dark theme, and then I, I, honestly, I prefer the dark theme. I like to have it synced across all my devices because I find a darker th theme more relaxing. Then over here, you've got language and sync everything across all of your, uh, your Discord installations. Pretty self-explanatory. And if you need to switch users, you can just go up here to this little arrow and you can log out and log somebody else in if they want to use your phone. So the last thing is over here is the channel drawer, the drawer of all the people. So if I open this up, you can see here's all the people that are attached to this server. I can click on them and I can do things like mute, lower their volume. I can mute them so I can't hear them. That doesn't mute them for everybody, but just that. And then if you click on, if you right click them maybe, or maybe it's press and hold, you can open up their user settings, which I just had open. Uh, let's open up buyers. Come on you. I'll press and hold, you can kick them, you can ban them, copy username. Uh, there is some way through this list of people to edit their permissions, but for some reason I'm not able to replicate it through this tutorial. So just do that directly through the server settings themselves. And that's basically how you set up a server. You can start adding people and adding their permissions as needed. You can send messages, you can upload stuff with this button. It's pretty self-explanatory. The only thing is that everything is just kind of in a different location because there's less real estate to work with. So I hope that helps you folks at home. If I didn't go over anything that you know is available that you'd like me to clarify for you, I'll leave this installed on my Bluestacks Android emulator to help you guys out. So throw those questions in the comments below. Otherwise, you know, suggest more to great tutorials that I can put up for the channel that could cover things like Discord. If you have any ideas for that, let me know. Feel free just to throw that in the comments below. And otherwise, I hope you found this tutorial a little bit insightful or it helped you in some way so that you can get on to having cool adventures with your friends on Discord, even when you're out and about. Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe, share this with your friends. I've been your host, Larry the Chupacabra. Have a good one, everybody, and toodaloo.